Welcome back, everyone. Game two is on the cards, ready and waiting for us after a 21 and a half minute victory for EG, where Infamous had no answer to the Radiance Life Stealer. We'll find out exactly what happens in game number two. Lacoste, the draft seems pretty similar, just reversed. Yeah, that was a short game number one, even a shorter pause between the games. Uh, that's what we like. No one likes uh, some big pauses. Uh, tiny. Uh, this time, first pick for EG. Let's see what uh, Infamous has. Razor is banned out, so no Omni and Razor combo. I like how EG ban the IO themselves, so they, <laughs> they don't give away the IO Omni, which they just destroyed Infamous with. Uh, EG just had you know, a, a better draft, a better game plan. Things worked out much nicer for them. Infamous didn't have any answers. Very snappy draft now. Gyro after Omni, Rubik after Gyro. So EG with the Misery Rubik ready again. Now, instant pick, uh, Rubik, no time wasted. Against Omni Knight, uh, one of the better heroes uh, you can have, uh, especially in the mid and Ten late game. It's remaining. guaranteed that you get a great spell, no matter what you steal. Five seconds remaining. That's true. Got some wonderful things. And then you've also got the toss back into lift back into tower or wherever you may be hiding. Some great displacement abilities out from EG, just across those two heroes. And again, you know, we look at the Tiny, can go into any number of roles. Although I, I feel like I expect Sumail to be playing at this game in the off lane and just play aggressive with him, have Crit sit up there, try and give him the best lane possible. EG's turn to ban. Infamous, ban. time to ban out some fear heroes, it looks like. DP gone. Might even remove the Lycan as well. We'll see what avenue they go down, though. As Chen has been left in the pool, right? Was it was it touched in the previous game? Uh, been second phase banned. I don't think it was uh, banned at all. No, Ten I don't think so either. Three. It wasn't, in fact. So Chen may be a hero here for EG to look at, right? With Five the Rubik lift all ready to set up. Some good lanes to rota rotate into. Gyro very squishy early on. Although Gyro can deal with Chen later on, potentially, with, you know, cool down and flat cannon. Uh, the early laning stage really can be a struggle. Yeah, uh, usually you don't see uh, people picking um, cores in the first two picks. This is a Gyro and Omni Knight. Uh, uh, from how European teams pick, uh, they tend to go for position four and five. Sometimes if they sneak in, uh, let's say, a PL, a Tiny, which can be thrown at uh, pretty much any lane. Um, Chinese teams prefer to get... Uh, Position 5, most of the Chinese teams position 5 and then get one of the cores, but it varies. It most certainly does. Alright, Infamous. What are you looking towards now? What are your support heroes? Drag out the old, uh, the old Witch Doctor. Remaining. Could be an option here. As Disruptor Five was, yeah, banned out by EG in that second phase, so they don't have any kind of combo with the Gyrocopter just yet. I think that's something you always have to kind of look out for is the gyro, you know, call down flat cannon, making sure people are trapped into one area. We often used to see Puck, but it feels like Puck has really fallen out of favor. And uh, like you're saying, with two cores picked up, right, it would force Puck into that mid lane potentially, unless you do like an Omni support. Yeah, I don't remember seeing uh, Omni support for quite some time. Well, it can be done, uh, but he needs uh, he needs levels. Yeah, that's uh, what baffles me, that uh, Tusk survives uh, the first uh, and the uh, second banning stage. Especially with uh, Omni Knight in pool, that's a lot of survivability. Like, you can use a heal, then use a snowball, then use heal again. There, there's your puck that you talked about. Uh, Omni Tusk as well. Omni, um, not, not the hero that... Uh, works best just by staying on an off lane, uh, have fun, good luck uh, in one versus two, one versus three scenarios. But uh, if Tusk rotates, they have Ten really good kill potential, remaining. especially when Tusk hits level two. Yeah, absolutely. Five so, seconds remaining. AG with that puck. Again. Still still nothing uh, nothing shown. Puck, tiny. Bo well, both of these heroes can be played in three lanes. I think even, even four, potentially, yeah. right? Because we've definitely seen EG, uh, we've definitely seen Misery. EG I think it may have been back on one of the previous the teams. I can't remember exactly which one where he's running, you know, like four roll puck roaming around and killing people. Tiny, of course, Radiant has been in that four roll a number of times. But with the Medusa now picked up, 
Maybe a little more credence to one of these heroes going into that support role. Maybe the four old tiny will make an appearance. As we potentially have the mid-deuce and the offlane puck. So lot, lot, tons of options for EG, basically, is what we're looking at and saying here. As their draft is very open, Ten whereas seconds. Infamous pretty locked in to what kind of setups they want and what roles Five they're sitting in. Uh, maybe they can run, you know, an aggro try with a Tusk, Shaman, and Gyro. Try and play a bit more aggressively. Yeah, Tusk, Tusk and Shaman uh, are bed. really good together. S support duo that uh, can easily rotate uh, strong in the laning stage, can go aggressive try lane. Uh, maybe you just should ban out uh, Phantom Lancer, I even though I don't think they are afraid uh, of playing Medusa against uh, PL. But uh, just in case. When, when you play against Medusa, it's uh, the same feeling you get when you're Five playing against, uh, let's say, old anti-mage. You always have a feeling that you need to do something ganking, but uh, somehow you can't. And then um, you're always um, forced to do something. And if you make a mistake, then it backfires. Yeah, you have to try and contest ancient stacks, get into the jungle, get deep vision down, expend all of this money from your supports, and then time through smoke ganks and all of that can be a difficulty. Final ban for EG, though. You mentioned the Phantom Lancer. It could be a reasonable option here for Infamous. Well, they they banned out uh, Winter Wyvern, which uh, could mean that they want to go for Lycan, one of the better heroes against Lycan overall. Lycan, TB, um, pretty much anything with an army, right? Anything with a ton of things sporting around them. Yeah, the Lycan could be a really good pick for Infamous. Once they go S5, they have a lot of save, a lot of damage, tower damage, uh, with Shadow Shaman Wards. Oh, yeah, that's that's why they banned out Lycan. There you have it. All right, EG. What are you thinking? Where, where are you putting these heroes? They have a lot of control, a lot of ways to start a fight with uh, with Puck, with Tiny, uh, especially when they get Blink Daggers. So it, it's really hard to guess what uh, what EG is doing. Maybe maybe a Pugna pick. I don't know how how they're gonna lane. Maybe they have all the cores and want to pick uh, position four hero right Radiant now. Team pick. There it is. There, Chen. all the way through to the final pick. Chen will come out. So, the way things are looking here, we're going to have a mid Medusa, safe lane tiny, off lane puck. Have that Chen roam around, try and help out these lanes. Ten seconds remaining. We'll see how they get on as infamous. Five seconds Not too long remaining. to pick their final hero, and it really does have to be something pretty... They're, they're uh, looking for a mid hero that works well against Medusa. Templar yeah. assassin. Choose your hero. TA. Pretty good against the tiny as well. No armor on that tiny. What, what, what is that beast on uh, on Chen? The it's a boar. It's, it's a, a boar. <laughs> <laughs> Another it's boar. A dog. It's what a is dog. it? Is it the giraffe? No, it's not Gary. It's a boar. <laughs> yes. I don't know. Is, is it a boar or is it a warthog? It's a boar. It's Pumba. It's <laughs> and Timba riding it. <laughs> Timber, <laughs> is that what it's called? Tim Timon, Timon, Timon yeah. and Pumba. Yeah, sorry. I was making fun yeah. of you. Like I'm, I was genuinely asking because in a lot of countries, the you know they rename things just in case it's like a swear word or it doesn't sound right. Oh yeah, they, they rename a bunch of stuff for different regions. Timba, I just combined Timon Timber. and Pumba. Timon That's and Pumba. Duo. <laughs> Timba. So uh, with Templar Assassin pick, uh, it gives them um, good uh, Roche capability, especially with Shadow Shaman. Uh, and Omni Knight, and the, that TA also one of the heroes that can easily snowball. Uh, also, you have a Tusk, so that's a double snowball. Nice. Look at Schofield profiles. Do, do you recognize the picture? Schofield's profile. Is it the? Uh, uh, where are we? Um, uh, is it? It's not from Monsters Inc. Is it? No, it's. Uh, I, I think it's from uh, Despicable Me. Despicable. No, I've not seen that. What about good night kisses? Don't know what that is. Nah, nah, I think that's the picture. Okay. Never mind. Let's focus on what <laughs> matters, and uh, that's memes. So, just kidding. Um, TA uh, sounds like a good pick, but with the early chain rotations, uh, TA could be uh, 
easily destroyed in the laning stage. But if Chen gets a tornado creep and puts it in mid, refraction, goodbye. <laughs> it gets very annoying for the T8 if she gets harassed back. I, I miss I miss the times when uh, Chen were picking up uh, mana burn creeps or the harpy. Yeah. Oh yeah. And the, just spam that chain lightning. Was it Poppy that would always do that level one harpy? Yeah, back when he was playing with Navi, Poppy would uh, pick Chen, get the little harpy stormcraft or whatever it's called, and you, it was something ridiculous. Like you had seven casts of of the lightning, and it did like a hundred damage or some something. And cooldown like was and cool around down was like five seconds. Four three, seconds. I don't yeah. know. It was a really short cooldown. In the good old days. Well, nothing happens top except an Obsward down. Not blocking any camps here. Shadow Shaman and Tusk set up top lane. Shards onto Sumail. Start things off. So we have a safe lane Puck coming out of EG with Crit on the Rubik helping out. Rasta and Tusk will shift down towards bottom lane as they put the Omni top. Infamous have the TA mid and Gyro Papita shifts. His momentum down towards bot against the Misery Chen and Fear on the Tiny. So it is a mid Dusa, but it is Arteezy with his hands on that hero. Starting off with a Ring of Bassy level 1, the old uh, the EE classic. The strat yeah. to piss off your opponents. Well, it gives you 7 damage if you go for uh, in some mana region. If you go for Raid Band, it gives you 7 agility, which uh, gives you the same amount of, uh, of damage. But it gives two two more. I guess he went for that build because uh, Ring of Bass it gives two more armor because of the side blades, uh, so it uh, mitigates some some of the damage. And you also toggle it like on and off to yeah, but it's pure damage. Never mind. Uh, the side blades is pure damage, but you like toggle it on and off, mess with your opponent's last hits. That 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 could work, but uh, TA is very strong. <laughs> TA sitting on three three two so far. Maybe she, maybe she could be in you know four and three, but Arteezy's messed her up a bit. Coming out with the punches, force the tango onto the tree. And one slippers of agility arrives for Arteezy. That's the extra damage. There we go. I'm Plus trying to find a reason why he would go for a ring of Bassy instead of a instead of a raid band because it gives the same amount of damage. It, it is just messing up with last hits. Like as soon as your opponent goes for a click, you toggle it on, give your creeps armor. Sometimes you it gets annoying, but. Maybe with the mana regen being able to spam out, maybe one more snake across the laning stage can help out. Now he's trying to toggle it on and off, but uh, it's not very effective. TA with uh, 9 CS. Yeah, level 2 refraction now as well. Significant amounts of damage, but bottom lane Shadow Shaman dragged back into the waiting arms of fear with the cyclone going back in behind the tier 1. Infamous defensive trial lane against this kind of two and a half lane. Misery Chen swings all the way back towards the western side of this Radiant Jungle, picks up a troll and maybe looks for a play in towards mid. Arteezy yet to level anything up at two and then holding a point. Yeah, they can't, three. they can't kill Templar Assassin, especially since Medusa is really low. Uh, top lane, Omni Knight's uh, getting a lot from there. I mean, it's a one versus one scenario against, uh, against the Puck, so he should be getting levels. Puck. 13 to 7. Well, this is where Sumail shines. He's uh, the king of classic one-on-one uh, -on -one scenarios. Oh, mid lane, Schofield with a double damage rune. Looks like he came in to try and make a play. He goes for the TP out and succeeds. Crit cannot finish him off. Arteezy now with a 2 and Snake, bringing out a salve to himself to reset that lane. Going decently so far for this TA, but Arteezy struggling massively. Sat down at 2 and 1 on the Dusa and MNZ 17-12. Arteezy's getting crushed in this lane, Lacoste. Um, well, uh, that, level uh, one. that Bassy toggle on and off uh, is not very effective, as we mentioned, but the uh, bottom lane is uh, getting destroyed and they can easily always stack for Medusa for to actually get back into the game. Uh, bottom lane is gonna get threatened. They have, what, four skeleton warriors. Fear is gonna drag the creeps away. And Crit sees a TP coming in, the dive in behind onto Shadow Shaman though. Rasta shackles but lifted immediately, homing missile flies across onto Crit and Schofield does have a snowball but Papita turned around on and now Tusk all alone as the gyro zoned out completely. There's no additional disable here outside of one toss from Fear. So the follow on damage will be lacking. A return of the Shadow Shaman, send back onto Crit. 
Shards are forced, and Schofield losing a lot of HP here, but Fear might just have stuck around a little too long. With his Radiant Creep Wave around, and Papita having the rock No, no, there's no Rocket no barrage. barrage. But he's still got the damage there, nearly. <laughs> Dies out to the Santa Blast, but I think that was Chen stealing it up and trying to do some return damage. Yeah, how is Medusa doing? 7 CS against 25-17 on, on Templar Assassin. Yeah, this, this DA could uh, go ham this game. Uh, the problem is... Um, that uh, Puck is getting a lot of farm on a top lane, and uh, if they decide to dive, he even has Orb of Venom just for extra harassment. They even kill uh, Medusa on a mid lane with the rotation from Tusk. Yeah. This is why Tusk is one of my favorite, especially when he hits level 2. But now the action bottom lane. Dive in behind tier 1, we'll catch this one as a toss from Fear. Gyro down, and Shadow Shaman, oh, there's no way to escape this really, is there? Three heroes converge onto his location, block him in the trees. Shadow Shaman, let me out! No way to escape. Yeah, they're securing uh, Fear's last hit. Once uh, Tiny gets uh, power threads, uh, the amount of uh, attack speed he gets is uh, just way too good. Uh, the problem is with Shadow Shaman that he got nerfed way too much, in my opinion. Uh, level 1 Aether Shock, uh, 14 seconds cooldown, and uh, if you use Shackles, it doesn't feel like you're actually dealing any damage. You're just standing there, waving yeah. your arms around. Yeah. Throwing some spells into the mix. But Gyro now rotates top lane. Samael is already level 6 with treads up, though, while the Gyro just cracked level 4. Going to be a difficult time for him up there. Shadow Shaman is brought up as well, but meanwhile, mid, they're trying to collapse onto the TA. Level 6 MNZ will get found by crit here, but the damage from the TA, now the shard's coming in. Crit! On the wrong side, unfortunately, now the lift over into RTZ. Misery only has a catapult to go, and it looks like Infamous will be able to disengage nicely away from all of that nonsense. But Sumail is potentially able to win a 1v2 up top. He's got an Orb of Venom, and he's just right-clicking down the Shadow Shaman. Poor little guy has nothing he can do. Yeah, but he can also dodge a rocket and should put uh, TP in his inventory, actually. Well, in they come with the shards. Orb. Jaunt away from danger, nicely played by Sumail. Pretty close to the line there, but Shadow Shaman with the 1 1 1 build may have been able to catch with a hex. Just Got not it. quite there in time. So Stinger, Omni Knight, reasonable laning stage, 23 and 1. Soul Ring is up, but now he is in a 1v3. Not the 1v1 he's been in for so long at that top lane. Tossed back into crit, and he can't Soul Ring to heal because he would have died anyway, so we'll drop. Again, Misery, right place, right time to pair up with Fear and Crit again. They're going to need to play around the uh, Templar Assassin. More Rubik TP stop, uh, which means they could get a kill. Puck, uh, uh, Puck has uh, oh, snap into coil. Do they have it? Yeah. Nice little phase shift away, but the shackles come now, and without the Dream Coil here, Sumail, he gets the nuke damage in, Schofield and this Rasta both dropping very low. Puck jaunts away, so... They get both kills while escaping with some mail, bottling up. Oh, that's so nice. Salving as well with a bounty rune to go. Perfect play from EG yet again. Two to seven as the TA looks like she dropped low from some kind of engagement middle lane, but they'll get the shrine going, try and stack up some camps for her. And uh, that, is, that is something that we often see with TAs on a team is that their supports will spend a lot of time stacking Ancients and stacking camps. But Shadow Shaman and Tusk haven't had the opportunity to do any of that, have they? Yeah, because they were pressured on a bottom lane. The bottom lane is going to go down. TA can stack for herself with traps. Radiance bottom tower has fallen. Well, tier 1 drops. Stinger. Well, sticks around. He's pretty strong. Level 1 Repel is there, just in case things get a little bit hairy. Schofield wrapping in from behind, but this nice obs ward from me. Uh, oh, that's, uh, that's an infamous obs ward. What am I talking about? I'll be able to potentially see the Chen rotation in and out. Schofield able to grab the bounty rune here, and TA double damage rune denied out by Misery. The shards will trap him in. Somehow he gets clipped inside the igloo. Schofield unable to actually <laughs> move forward with the catapult in the way, but the snowball will enable them now with a trap. Misery, a couple of clicks from TA, secures that kill. No idea how the shards managed to drag Misery inside, but okay. The terrain may be playing against Misery them. is half Eskimo. He wants to get into Igloo. <laughs> Shout out to Rasmus. Rasmus always played the one mean Chen. Uh, level 4. Uh, I wonder who's going to buy a Tome on this. Well, Rubik is uh, 
actually super farm. 2, 0, and 5. Almost level level 5 with Urn, when Lace Boots, Magic Wand. He has the same net worth as the Gyro on the other team. Puppita's having a really rough time. A tiny top of the net worth at this point. Four and a half thousand. Treads up. 600 gold in the bank towards the Blink or whatever he may decide to go for. TA. Gets zoned away from the tower for now. Trying to rush into the Desolator there. One little stack of Ancients being built up. Of course, on this Radiant side, if you've not seen the video, there is one out there that shows you how you can stack both camps of the Ancients at the same time. You have to be standing in like a specific spot, so you're within aggro range of the Ancients with traps in either of them, as mid lane Medusa is being gone on, but Arteezy tanky with the Mana Shield up, and TA Tusk will have to fall away. Yeah, you're gonna... Top lane. Gyro caught in the Dream Claw. Snap back, and Crit will... Claim the kill. Sumail now in trouble though as he's turned around on and the cross is there. Crit trying to TP out. Is there a disable or a damage? No. We'll TP back home. Sadly. Uh, they had no mana on Omni. Spells were on cooldown for, for Rasta. There, there's no stacks whatsoever. One stack uh, here and that's pretty much it. Okay, one here as well. But uh, considering uh, there's a TA and Medusa, you would expect um, there to be more stacks. But a lot of fights were going on. They were focusing on the bottom lane, so both supports from EG and Infamous couldn't couldn't uh, be in the jungle stacking. Everyone's been very focused on lanes. Keep their eyes on these waves. Samael very close to this blink dagger, and this is almost this is this is like a, having a mid lane puck, right? Yeah. Well, off lane. Uh, that, I, I guess that's why sh they shifted the uh, Sumail to to an off lane because mid is most. Two versus two, sometimes even three versus three, and uh, it, I guess it's really annoying for him to play. Play, he shines in one versus uh, one, sometimes one versus two scenarios. That's why they shifted him to to an offlane. Try and get the most. Like every time he plays a classic one versus one, most of the time, Dominant. the lane is one. Well, tier one mid, claimed there by the TA, closing in on that Deso. Eleven minutes in, getting traps down, sentries out. Blocking up these camps. So even if EG wanted to, and it looked like Arteezy did try, the stacks will not be coming there. Pings out from Infamous as well, saying, hey, we need to go and check out the Ancients over to the eastern side. Make sure this god spot here isn't abused by the Medusa. But top lane, this is something they have to deal with. Misery with a catapult strat, and Samael with a blink in, jumps the Rasta, but immediately jaunts out again. Making sure that Rasta doesn't have any aggressive play potential, but with Misery caught here by the TA and the Snowball, Infamous will make short work of them. Try and force these catapults away. But Misery can't drag them back just yet. They might survive long enough for him to respawn and call them back in, though. They are tanky, tanky beasts. Yeah, they're wrapping around Gyro. Toss. The Avalanche. Papita call down and a homing missile in, but too scared to play forward into them. Knows that Sumail is coming in. Stinger. Needs to come He's going to go and for save it. for the gyro, but Sumail's in there, deep behind the tier one. Fear being tracked back by Schofield, though. They can kill this tiny, but Fear turns and burns. Schofield drops low, and Sumail still here with an orb ready. He'll snowball forward, but this will be his inevitable demise. Crit is cleared up by MNZ, but Fear and Snowball will not be able to do too much. Now the Hex, good from the Rasta. Shackle forward as well, oh, and the Purification Bomb takes Sumail down at long last. But you're still losing this gyro time and time again. Middle of the board net worth and not looking good. They need some stacks for gyro to come back into the game or play around him. Have Omni Knight uh, have a TP so he can actually save him up. Omni with the Hood of Defiance going straight for the pipe against Tiny and uh, Puck. I guess it's the best you can get. Chen, Chen is still not level 6. Crit is... Uh, Having a really good time. Yeah. Steals level 4 purification, blows up creep waves, and feels pretty good about himself right now. Deso finished on TA with level 4 meld. If they take a fight, kill, let's say, two heroes of EG, uh, this opens up a Roche for them. Are they going straight in there? Oh, where did they go? EG. Oh, with Rasta Wards, they can, they can easily kill it. Tusk just buying time knows where EG is moving, using Sigil to scout. Yeah, they don't know about this Roche. Yeah, Radiant Obsward just outside the range of the sentry. 
It's so weird. You you move the camera and it looks like it's in the sentry range but it's not. there, and then you move it to the left and it's like definitely not. The weird and wonderful oh, oh. world of, of perspective. Oh, yeah. Yeah, see? Uh, <laughs> That's one of those things a lot of people talked about, why a, a lot of people feel more comfortable Radiant playing on the Radiant down. side. It's just the perspective of the, of the camera, down. sort of top-down top from an down. angle. Attack. Feels nicer when you're moving sort of bottom left towards top right. Yeah, that's why I love Radiant more. Yeah, absolutely. Bottom so, lane, catapult's Radiant coming in. Is under attack. Misery going for that mech build. So he's playing kind of the, the classic, you know, five roll Chen, right? Roaming, ganking, doesn't care too much about himself, has these armies to pressure in towers, and of course, will be able to save people up with the hand of God. Ancients being stolen here, though, by Arteezy and Fear, cleaving and clearing through them, and an Ops Ward there to block the camp for any future stacking endeavors. Infamous, don't care too much. They're off on a mission of their own, taking tier two top lane. And looking to control Radiant up this dire jungle. For some attack. reason, pipe was popped on Omninate. Spooked. There was no one top. They can still defend the fallen. tier 2 tower on mid. Uh, or if they want to continue with uh, Deso and TA. If they had a helm to steal his catapult, it might have been worth it. But it feels like at this moment, Infamous have to come back. And defend Fear with a Shadow Blade. He did go that instead of the blink. The hit into a slap down. Avatos will clear up Tusk. The trap taken out as well. So MNZ moves forward with a blink. The meld, the damage coming in. Fear, low armor already, of course. But the send back from Chen might be enough here to take him away from danger. And indeed, Fear is safe. Infamous just seemed to be... Uh, a day late and a dollar short every single time they move in, and Omni Knight feeling the pain as well. Gets his own purification and repel off, but he is blown up by EG. The masses of creeps all around. A Schofield looks for Misery, punches up into the air. The Stone Gaze is out, though. Arteezy moving forward, and down goes Misery. Okay, Schofield Snowball trying to get in on top of Fear. There's the jump as infamous MNZ moves in with the Meld Strike. Arteezy chasing back, though. Sumail arrives, and TA trapped in the midst of all the EG heroes. Does take down Fear, but Schofield life was lost. Trap forward, but the call down in. There's Papita doing a oh, good amount of damage trap. with a ward trap over the top. Arteezy! Oh, he's gonna get taken down and ripped apart. The chase forward, though. Gyro does die. Where is the TA? That's who I want to look for. Taking down crit. MNZ on a triple kill. A wicked six streak and looking for Samail. But he can't catch the puck with no disables. Samail has an easy route of escape. Maybe even looks for a kill here. Chip away at the refraction. There we go, but the waiting rift won't come. And Shadow Shaman has stuck Shackles around. Level three. Shackles coming through. The Mel Strike! An ultra kill for MNZ. Infamous coming out and sweeping EG. They couldn't even take the Aegis out of TA. Uh, the way this fight started, the uh, fear didn't blow up Tusk like he did the last time, which actually backfired. Uh, he managed to use a snowball on him, use ice shards to block him out, and uh, everything they used, Medusa ulti, then. They have no escape mechanism whatsoever, and TA can just uh, cut uh, cut through them. That really was the TA and, show, and the, right? And the war trap from Rasta. Onto it, two it people. It felt like it was on two people. I didn't see if uh, if there was a Kree blocking it, but it was definitely on Medusa. Yeah. And then into the call down, Gyro, this sacrificial hero. Drums, phase boots. I mean, he's got drums complete now, He doesn't now, have right? uh, drums. Okay. That's on the courier. It's on the courier. It is just, just finished. I had to go and check myself. because I saw the recipe and I'm like, oh, no, that feels really bad. <laughs> where's, your, uh, where's your item? Oh, Misery, hello. Hand of God popped for himself. But this TA, too strong. 902, 12,000 net worth at this point as they swing from tower to tower. They want to go for tier three, I think. Uh, yeah, they're they're drawing on the on the mini map. They have Rast awards in 20 seconds. Still Aegis on a TA. Omni Knight uh, has everything, plus a pipe. They just need sentries. Do they have a couple of sentries? Uh, sadly, no. Infamous using Omni Knight as well as EG did in the last game, finding this timing. 18 minutes in, grouping up as five. Serpent wards are in with the help of MNZ's Desolator. This tier three. Oh, these wards are placed way too deep. Uh, Medusa's just clearing them up, one by one. Crit, misery, everyone in fact. Four ranged heroes all on top of the three-man snowball. This has opened things up. Now MNZ is in trouble. The Aegis might pop, but the refractions there for a little while. Now dies. The cleave through from fear takes down the Rast of the Tusk, follows immediately after, and Stinger stuck around too long. EG hold their high ground, and Infamous give away so much. Their entire lead 
their entire momentum built up over the past two or three minutes just crumbles. Omni Knight again uh, couldn't cast the uh, ulti. They, they were way too deep. Like this, this is a classic three-two-two. Aegis on TA was still there. Rasta wards uh, placed around the towers, which means uh, they're gonna be some wards uh, closer to, yeah, like that. And uh, with Medusa, with uh, Dragonlance and Puck, they can they can easily kill those wards. It's like, for instance, if they you know put their wards down here, then they're able to set up and play you know the kind of further back strat with you know Omni or someone sitting back here. They have the Tusk who can come in with a snowball, but because of the wards are there, they need to protect the wards. So they're all of a sudden playing in that box on the ramp, and things get real nasty. I mean, they still had the Aegis, so the the way they could have played with it is uh, repel TA and just hit the tower. Hmm. What level is Repel? Level, yeah, level 4 Repel, hey. Definitely could have been an option. Well, that won't halt Infamous. Still, they've got this TA up at the top of the net worth. Omni Knight is their second core. Gyro is now the, uh, the utility hero, the offlaner. He's moving into SNY, though, so should still be able to scale reasonably well. And so progress through into that mid to late game. It would be nice, though, to have, you know, a blink on your tusk or some kind of... Uh, maybe even a blink on Omni. Some kind of uh, jump and save ability to have that additional range. It looks like he's going to go for the Ether Lens, which I guess does a very similar thing. And yeah, he needs, to, he needs to stay back and uh, just be able to cast those spells. Otherwise, they're going to use uh, lose... Oh, nice blink. Good stone gaze and, well, shards don't connect. I was watching down bottom, though, in fact, as Gyro has been gone on by the Puck and the big army. Arriving onto the tier 3, so while Infamous are chasing down this Dusa, they are losing a little bit on their towers, but a good clear through of the creep wave there from Papita will slow things up a bit. Fear, Shadow Blade and Silver Red spotted there, Insta Hex with a snowball, punched up, and Fear, oh, he's in trouble. The shackles may not last as long as they want with that status resistance, but he will still fall. And EG, they don't get a tier 3 or any real significant damage, just a bit of chip away. Yeah, that was a waste of uh, Omni Knight ulti there. Uh, I guess he was afraid that uh, Rast was gonna die, but uh, he could have used heal and just save him there. Good, good sentry ward. Yeah. Oh, who but like if if fear's walking into you, do you do you maybe expect the rest of EG to be lurking around? Well, I guess he, the way he was standing here was just trying to break the smoke or find someone who's uh, come gonna come from back and uh, try to snipe him. Medusa is getting back into the game, second uh, on the network chart, level 17 with Pike uh, Mask of Madness, which gives her a lot of survivability, even though she's not that tanky enough with Dio Scotty against uh, TA, that's, that's gonna hurt TA. Uh, Crystal is finished and uh, is going for full butterfly, yeah, it seems to be. She had Daedalus queued up. I she had the Bloodthorn, Daedalus. When they were pushing high yeah. ground, they're like, oh yeah, we can go aggressive, 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 and then realizes that potentially here that butterfly is going to help out a little more. Infamous back into their nice little groove though. Misery, Misery have Basher queued up. What? Okay. Maybe he just really wanted that belt of strength. <laughs> just tank up. <laughs> um, <laughs> couldn't tell you. Uh, can this game please prolong for the next 30 minutes? <laughs> I want to see Basher I want to see Jen. something. Yeah, I, I don't know what's happening there. Fear is moving forward. Uh, they, they, they feel something. TA blinks away. Butterfly nearly done. Just a couple of hundred gold away from that little talisman of evasion. And EG won't be able to catch there. The TA traps. Giving a fair amount of vision as Infamous do back up towards the Roshan pit. What we're looking at. 10 oh. seconds until the big man returns to his cave. I guess it's not a cave, it doesn't have a roof. His uh, area, his zone. Fear. Seems to be playing a lot of this game very far forward. Very aggressive. Maneuvering from him, the rest of the team scouting into Roshan and they'll know that it's up. There is the butterfly for the TA though, so next fight coming up. What is it that EG try and do? Who do they look to pick off? Because this tiny, it's pretty important that he finds kind of one hero and focuses them down, right? Yeah, well, TA, uh, no BKB. I mean, 
she has Omni Knight behind her, but at one point it's gonna come that you, you're gonna need a BKB. If they take Aegis, she, she doesn't need a BKB. Well, they have sentries and wards. Fear is about to walk into the range of that sentry, but crit, one, two, three, punch, purify up, so crit is Miss. still alive, there's... The crits from MZ, but the back end, Fear tries to take down the Tusk. He saved up, the Glimmer Cape is there, but the Dream Coil out from Puck. Fear turns and tries to run, but Arteezy Stone Gaze does manage to hold this fight and slow it down a little bit until the Snowball flies over the river, across the ramp, and now Schofield finds himself in the waiting arms of Crit, but the Insta Hex comes out. Rasta, he's trapped in the Puck. Sumail is all alone, but the Snowball save the steal. Oh, Rubik turns it around, and Crit will keep Sumail alive for another round of spells, and Fear comes back in again, looks for Stinger, and the Omni he has given away his life. Two kills for EG as they storm forward and maybe even look to take down Roshan. Misery was doing God's work, sending back two times two heroes to save them up. No one died on the side of EG, also crit with the stolen uh, snowball. Meanwhile, DA on a mid, I don't know if you noticed, she was actually trying to use side blades, just uh, killing the, the creep way, but uh, couldn't deal any damage. And now Shadow Shaman dies as well. Buy back from the Omni Infamous, it feels they need and want to contest this Roshan. Fear, Invis, back and away. Omni's buyback, you've got to be wary about this, don't want to lose your life now. And Arteezy just sits inside the pit and says, whatever, I'll click this down until the cows come home. I don't care, if it takes a million years. They, they need to contest this, they need to go and try to make something happen. They can't just let the Medusa get the Roche, it's cheese and Roche. The trouble is that EG has Dream Coil and all of Puck's spells yeah. ready again. Meanwhile, on the bottom lane, there's four creeps from Misery. Ray's dead. What? Summon some skeletons. <laughs> and of course, EG has this very deep observer ward, and it's been able to see every movement filter through across past these ancients. Relatively difficult to deward as well. A little more uncommon than some of these other warding spots. The Yules is there for the Omni. So didn't go for the Ether Lens or the Blink. Yules into Lotus Orb, it appears, is what he's heading towards. But Roshan, what is he at? Three and a half they thousand Medusa. HP. Medusa inside the shards, but a quick Hurricane Pike over the top of them. Arteezy will be safe for now. TA thinking about the Blink forward will go in, but the Phase Shift is there from Sumail. And Infamous just trying this kind of poking and prodding, but EG they are very, very wary of what's happening and fear moving forward into the sentry, though. They know that Tiny's around. He pops out of Invis. Infamous still holding this area. As bottom lane, they're going to lose the tier 3. The creep's dragged back. And they know that Gyro, bottom lane, will have to walk a long way or TP to Shrine and get himself towards the pit. So EG move in and try again. Medusa has level 3 ulti plus uh, 700 mana shield, so she's tanky enough. Call down in, TA forward, Stone Gaze though, even through the repel, will catch the TA, Roshan is dead, the Avalanche forward, Sumail takes the Aegis, don't know who has the cheese, but Papita, he does, he's gonna stay alive, the Guardian Angel come out well, as well as Arteezy, doesn't have the Aegis, the Guardian Angel stolen, Rubik gets the job done, send back on Arteezy Medusa, Chen with a godly plays along with Crit, the EG support, pulling out all the stops here, as Fear still sticking around, looking for a takedown onto anyone he can find, Chen chased down as Crit does fall, Papita finds that one, but Misery with a TA MNZ clearing through him will lose his life and Fear with 10 seconds on this Shadow Blade might be in trouble but guess who's here to save the day it is Sumail with the Yule Scepter up into the air buying time for that Shadow Blade to come back up Fear kept alive by Sumail this puck keeps on going Face shift ready again in a second or so, and he's got the Aegis, of course. So even if he does die, has that second life, but it's Sumail. Oh, there we go. Where's Rast? Rast is dead. They, they can't really kill this buck. Silence out. Or can they crit? He's got he's got Yule Scepter here. And an orb Omni. quickly. Oh, oh, they found him. Stinger, repel. Oh, move forward. He's in the trees. They can't find him. There's no avenue in there. Sumail. Even though he lost the Aegis, the Radiant Scan, they know, they know he's somewhere here. Oh my god, if they find him, Arteezy is there trying to hold the hand of Samael back. One of the hardest heroes to kill. Level 4 phase shift, Dual Scepter, Blink Dagger. Uh, who got the last hit on Roche? Dyer. Uh, so, Puck with Aegis, Aegis is gone. Cheese also picked up by Gyro, uh, which was used. They should focus uh, Chen in these fights. Uh, TA should should be the one focusing uh, Chen because he's just saving people 
uh, Rubik not that uh, easy of a kill. Uh, Solar Crest, that evasion chance. He tried to go on him for a couple of times, didn't work out. Now He's got it's going to be scepter. yeah, now, Ghost Scepter and 11 Urn of Shadow Charges. I don't think I ever saw that. Ele oh, wow. That, that is big. I think when I, I glanced at it and I thought it was just one. But it's 11. My brain just couldn't accept that the number was so high. Well, once TA finishes uh, the Bloodthorn, that, that's going to be huge. And Gyro's going to go for the Nullifier, so across the two heroes, they'll have that Doomstick. Alrighty. Medusa still doesn't deal that uh, much damage uh, with, with Ioscati. She can easily kite around Gyro and uh, especially TA. And what's the TA up to? Just sprinting down this bottom lane. They don't want Chen to get any action on those open racks again. Something that Misery's been doing very well. Sending these creeps out to split push side lanes and then drag them back into the fight when he needs them. Does he still does he still have it queued? Yep. Maybe, maybe he should get uh, a Ghost Scepter, which, uh, which is going to help him. From TA, the tier 3 tower might go down oh, and they're the way setback. too deep. Gyro. Can't really do enough damage there. Deep. Oh, down towards bottom lane. Samael shackled up. Schofield is in. They're trying to kill off Raster and they will succeed while the Medusa looks like she escapes in behind the Schofield zap down. And it looks like Misery was able to get Arteezy out of danger the second time around. And there are fights happening at the two sides of the map. Full AC finished on Tiny. They almost managed to take down Tier 3 Tower. Uh, again, way too deep uh, from Infamous. Especially since uh, TA does not have a BKB of her own. Yeah, I think they, they saw, you know, this Arteezy, Medusa and the Chen both kind of around this ancient area. And they dispelled off the Chen Sen back with the Yule Scepter of Omni and they were like, cool, we've, we've stopped Arteezy. But the, the cooldown on it isn't that long at all. It's like eight seconds or something on this on his send back. So Misery was just there again with a second time around and well, Arteezy tanky enough to withstand the damage from a very underfarmed gyro. 11,000 net worth. Comparable with a puck, I guess, Papita. And now moving into the Assault Cuirass. Deciding to not go for the Nullifier just now. Likely going to be the choice of MNZ on that Templar Assassin after the Bloodthorn. Fear. Top shrines Able to take down Shrines, of course, that Tier 3 dropping earlier on. And with, with Aegis and you know, Roshan kind of being expended as, like, let's just call it, you know, an even fight. No one got Aegis, no one got Cheese. It was just, you know, sent into the Abyss, destroyed and removed from the game. It feels like Infamous needed that to progress their momentum and be able, you know, to be able to go and fight and do stuff, while EG doesn't feel like they really care too much about you know, not having Aegis, right? Yeah. You know what Chen's going for? He's going for uh, Crimson Guard, actually. Against the TA, that's that's really good item, and also against the Gyro's uh, Flag Canyon. But we wanted an Abyssal Misery. <laughs> <laughs> Why did he buy a Belt of Strength? Did he think uh, about Necro, maybe? I don't think he would go for Necro. If he wanted, the, he would just go for um, Helm of the Dominator, I guess, to have an extra creep. That's, uh, that's so interesting. Just to tank it up, the casual belt. Yeah. And now he's got the full Crimson. Mech Arcane's Crimson Guard. What's that? A full Lincoln's on the puck now as well to be able to deal with the snowball, but also Raster's spells, probably more importantly the Hex and the Shackles. Infamous being scouted every step of the way here as the Dire Ob's Wards. Watching out on this top lane. Roche may respawn in two minutes. That's where the next fight is, is going to be. Templar Assassin... Uh, do the math. Does she have enough to buy? Yeah, she has actually 5.3k uh, to buy a full Bloodthorn. Yep. 1, Why am I even asking you, man? I'm, I'm, I'm a math expert. Uh, yeah, I don't EU. know. I mean, I'm hovering over things and looking at tooltips. You're doing it all in your head. Top lane, looking for the catch. Repel onto the Shadow Shaman, but he's going to get punched down by the Scardi Medusa. Short work made of the Shadow Shaman and dead for 50 seconds. That's a lot of the team fight control gone from Infamous now. Also, a lot of their defensive power if they needed those Serpent Wards in the battle. 
It's gonna be really hard for Infamous uh, to actually fight since uh, Chen bought that Crimson Guard, Medusa has a Butterfly level 23. Yeah, they can't really focus uh, Rubik uh, Chen also sitting on 20 armor. When he's uh, next to Tiny with AC, it's gonna be 25. If he reaches uh, level 15 soon, plus 7 armor. Yeah, that's th th these heroes are gonna be pretty much unkillable. Schofield and Stinger just, just threw the book at Arteezy and he did not care. He didn't lose any HP or mana, really. Doesn't feel the burn at all from snowballs or purifications. TA bottom lane in onto the tier 3, though. Looks like it will just die. Nothing really from EG here able to stop it. They will have to TP back and defend the racks, though. Force the TA away. MNC hiding back, though, in an unexpected place, potentially. Maybe able to go for a little backstab, but decides to just TP back towards this fight in the middle lane. They're setting up for it. Sumail has a long way to run from bot towards mid. EG not committing without that puck, though. Gyro uh, has enough gold uh, to buy full AC. Uh, yeah, it's flying. Uh, if he gets level 20, that's gonna that's gonna be easier, especially with uh, Medusa's uh, Eye of Scotty. Plus 50 movement speed. That's gonna help him a lot to not be kite in these fights. I'm just wondering now, how how do you kill Medusa in this game? Like the TA has so many people to focus on. Oh, the dust is there. Fear. Lincoln's popped on him by some mail. Schofield turned around on and blown up as MNZ does move forward. The meld in with the damage. Fear. They're trying to send him back with the hand of God there. The Yule Sept will dispel that though and make sure the fear is stuck here. Tiny falls. That's a lot of gold in pockets of uh, of TA again. Uh, Roche just spawned tiny. Uh, he has a buyback. If if they decide to go for Roche, they have a vision from a trap. Uh, he might be uh, needed to actually use that buyback. Oh, Rubik has uh, stolen traps, does he? Very sneaky. Here they caught now. Chen misery. Yeah, real unfortunate. He has a buyback as well. No, nope. he doesn't. Oh, well, he's a high level. Yeah, this is huge. The Shadow Shaman or double uh, double spells from Omen Knight from Refresher Shard. It's the that third be Roshan, huge. isn't it? Yeah. 36 minutes in. Tiny does buy back like you called. And uh, EG, they're going in. They need to fight around this pit. Guardian Angel forced out early. Very early. And Infamous with Roshan down to about 3k HP. Feels like they need to finish this one off, but... Evil Genius is not going to give it up so easily. Hex forward onto Arteezy. They have Samael here ready to jump in with the Dream Coil, but it's Fear in the back lines. Cleaving Thor, through Papita and Stinger as Roshan falls and snatched by MNZ. TA has the Aegis and Stinger does fall. In the mix of things, though, Arteezy Hurricane Pikes back out of the pit with the Stone Gaze going. He'll bring down the Omni and the Gyro. And TA trapped inside up against Fear, tossed in the air. The Aegis is still there and will respawn. But what can Infamous do around this TA to save her? Fraction moving forward onto Arteezy, but he's tanky, trying to bring him down with a Schofield Tusk, but kept alive. Arteezy survives with the Urn forward. He's going to try and turn back around, kept up by Misery, and TA will fall. Stinger, unfortunately, his buyback will turn into a dieback, and Infamous again around the pit. Something that they require to come back into this game. Snatched away. Yeah, this Medusa is so tanky. They need to focus her with, uh, with the Bloodthorn, but... Uh, when he uses a Bloodthorn twice, he got uh, lifted by Rubik. Uh, that's a dieback from Omni Knight. Uh, sadly for Gyro there, he had uh, both uh, Cheese and Refresher Shard, but uh, Cheese was one second on cooldown because it was not in his inventory. That sucks. Cheese on T8. EG though, ripping through these buildings. Fear with a big tree. Chunking through the ranged racks, Arteezy focusing melee, they'll get both of the buildings here. Now swinging down towards bottom lane, knowing that Omni did die back, they're in a 5v4 and now a 5v3 as Tusk gives away his life. TA has a lot on her mind right now as she shoves out bottom lane. Well, two full lanes of racks though will go the way of EG, 38 minutes in. Infamous starting to fall apart at this point. It's time to go now. Like, they need to go win. Even if they kill Medusa, she has a buyback plus BOTs and uh, can come back easily. Gyro's just immediately blown up. That's a dieback on Papita. 
Now it is a 5v2. EG, well, blood's thrown onto Misery, but the repel turn around from Crit. Now TA blinks north. The trouble is Rasta dead elsewhere. Arteezy just hitting out with the split shot, killing off the poor little Shadow Shaman. Stinger has finally respawned, but it feels like this is more than just an uphill battle, but an impossibility for Infamous. Jump in from MNZ, trying to catch out Misery. Stinger moves forward, but this is a tanky Chen with that Crimson Guard and Greaves. Yule's up, but TA dead, and Omni follows immediately after the Snowball will extend the duration of his death, but Schofield cannot keep the rest of his team alive, and GG is called. EG will take out Infamous. Yeah, EG played really well. Um, I'm just gonna say Misery's Chen is one of the best in the world. Uh, what, what he did this game, uh, the sandbags, was just uh, on point, saved a couple of times, especially during the Roche fights, and uh, they couldn't focus anyone. They, they, they lacked uh, lockdown. In, I mean, in terms of lacking lockdown, I mean, Rasta can't really go in. Every time he goes in close, he gets he dies. Either he gets up. blown up by uh, Puck or Tiny, and then the fight is four versus five most most of the time. The, uh, if you look at the graph, uh, as you are right now, it it's was pretty even it until 30-minute mark, then it just went down. I was expecting Infamous to maybe, you know, have a, a bit of a lead sort of around here, you know, when they're, you know, winning team fights, pushing forward, but EG kept it, you know, very level the entirety of the game, and then a few swing fights around Roshan. Yeah, the problem was that uh, they lost the bottom lane so hard, so they couldn't play around Gyro, uh, and both of the supports were under-leveled, which was also won by Misery's Chen. M mid lane was destroyed by TA. He was on Artizi had like three CS while Medusa was sitting on uh, while uh, TA was like 22 around or 20. something. Yeah, yeah. Was, uh... top was. Uh, Won by Puck, but uh, it's an Omni Knight. You really don't care about uh, Puck having a couple of more CS. You just need to be at the right time, at the right moment. Well, a loss for Infamous, a win for EG. But of course, the memes are the real victors <laughs> in the end. TA ends with 322 CS. We wouldn't expect any less from the South American squad than to end things up with. A nice little tip of the hat there, but that will be the end of the road for them. EG will move forward and continue through this lovely little lower bracket. We don't know who they're going to be up against, though, do we? But we've got more games. We've got two more series coming up for you today. Secret against LGD is our second series of the day. And this one should be, That's pretty, gonna be hype. pretty spectacular, honest. So from myself and Lacoste, we're going to take a short break here, get ourselves into the lobby, get ourselves ready for the next series. See you guys in just a short break, hopefully. Fingers crossed.